Hollywood's gross. And it's been gross for a very, very long time. And somehow they have opinions about everybody and everything. So let's talk about those who they choose to adulate and really like. Now, I'm not going into everybody that has a history because that would be a very long video because it's really disgusting there. But today I kind of want to talk about Kirk Douglas. So everybody loves some Kirk Douglas. Well, let's talk about his past a little bit, okay? So this is all allegedly. So let's get this out now. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Kirk Douglas allegedly uh, R-worded Natalie Wood violently when she was 15. She met him at the Chateau Marmont. She thought that they were going to discuss a movie project or a role. And so she was very excited because Kirk Douglas was a big money-making man in Hollywood. Actually, up until his death, he was getting standing ovations. So she went up to meet him. He offered her a drink and told her, I like young girls. Threw her on the bed when she tried to leave and R-worded her so bad that after the hours that she was up there with them had to be rushed to the emergency room because she was bleeding. And while she was at the emergency room, her mom told her not to file a complaint because it would ruin her career. So no complaints were ever filed. I think it's really depressing that something so horrible can happen to somebody and the victim themselves has to be the worry the ones worried about repercussions and not the you know the perpetrator but i'd like to say it's different today but it's really not how many times you know are current hollywood stars acting crazy and getting away with it so um and that's not even really I mean, it's really bad history, but obviously he's never been charged, so it has to stay allegedly. He also has ties to a woman who disappeared in 1949. Her, ne her name was Jean Spangler. And so he's linked to her dis uh, disappearance. Now, Stephanie Harlow has a really good um, video on here about it, so I really suggest you look it up and check it out. But anyhow, so on the night of October 7th, 1949, Jean left with left her daughter with her sister-in-law, Sophie. She told her sister-in-law that she was going to meet her ex-husband, Dexter Brenner, to talk about some child support that was still owed to her and to talk about maybe increasing her monthly allowance for that. And then afterwards, she supposedly was going to go over to the studio where she was working as an extra with Kirk Douglas. So she leaves the house and never comes back. Nobody knows what happens to her. She completely disappears. So Sophie, her sister-in-law, was worried. And the following day contacts LAPD. And let's face it, they don't have a very great reputation or history. So she contacts them, and they don't really do anything about it. Jean Spangler was also a showgirl, so she worked at this nightclub where they had, like, dinner theaters and just a general job where it doesn't come with a lot of respect, especially for women. Any woman that would become a showgirl... Um, basically was considered living fast, especially in the 1940s. So she disappears and eventually her purse is found in Griffith Park and not, there was no money stolen out of it because she was broke. She was going to go get child support. The only money that she had in her purse was her lucky silver dollar. So nothing was stolen out of that bag. And there was a note or a letter in the bag that was part that was written by Jean. It wasn't finished yet, and it said, "Kirk can't wait any longer. Going to see Doctor Scott. It will work best this way while Mother is away." 
So her friends said that Jean was three months pregnant at that time. So they're thinking that she was talking about going to see Dr. Scott to get an illegal abortion. Remember, abortions back then weren't illegal or weren't legal. So you'd have to go to really sketchy doctors to get it done. And a lot of women died having that done. So they were thinking that maybe, you know, she died during the whole process, which wasn't unheard of. Um, now, mind you, she was working as an extra, I think it was a like young male with a horn or young man with a horn with Kirk Douglas. So, I think that maybe, allegedly, what people think is that she was having a relationship with Kirk Douglas. She gets pregnant. There are, you know, she's pressured into um, getting that abortion. And then, for whatever reason... Maybe he kills her. I don't know. I think it's weird, though, because he does end up calling the police without any prompting or without the police contacting him or even really knowing that he's the Kirk that she's talking about. And he tells them that he was... He didn't even remember her, that she was just an extra, that his friend had to remind him who she was before he even realized that... That's, you know, who the missing lady was. That he was sick in Palm Springs. He had the flu, so he was by himself. And, you know, he just wanted to already give an alibi. Okay. So, he's also, Kirk is allegedly also known for just womanizing. And in his book, what is it called? His book was... Oh, The Ragman's Son, his first book, where he talks about growing up. He says that he was a womanizer, a heavy drinker, and that sex was like big game hunting to him, so he didn't take it very seriously. There's also interviews with Michael Douglas that he says that he doesn't want, he didn't want to bring his girlfriends around because his dad was such a womanizer that... His dad would end up making passes at his girlfriend's the entire time. But once again, more on that can be found. Um, the whole Jean uh, story can be found on Stephanie Harlow's YouTube channel. Now, another really gross thing that I found was during the golden age of Hollywood, we all kind of have seen movies that talk about, you know, the studio fixers and all of that. Well, during the golden age of Hollywood, studios like MGM managed to manage the motion picture market and the lives of their employees. They controlled things like their lives, who they chose to marry, the hairstyles, um, their images. They would come and fix any issues that arose in their lives just to keep and maintain a clean image. But behind the scenes was anything but clean. I mean, Judy, 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 Judy Garland's history and story is just so sad in total and in general. But part of that sad story is that Louis B. Mayer allegedly um, allegedly groped Judy Garland when she was only a teenager. So... As a woman in that situation and those surroundings, you weren't safe. Also, you were expected to just be available. And you had to accept the fact that you were going to be sexualized. And um, men were just going to assume that you were sexually available to them. You know, you had the, catch, the casting couch where... Women were expected to perform certain acts if they ever wanted to have a chance at a role. You know, especially as they're working their way up to bigger status, they were expected to put out. Um, 
And it's just, I guess, I mean, look at Weinstein. You still hear about that to this day. So, you know, there's not a real place to be safe in that atmosphere and in that environment. Um, they were kind of handed out like, women were handed out like party favors for parties and, you know, outings for stag nights for men. If they knew, you know, knew somebody in the studios, they would get a bunch of aspiring starlets together and have them entertain the men. Women would get raped and you couldn't say anything about it because you would get your, you'd get shot down, you would get told, you know, all these things and the media would be told stories about you to disqualify or discredit you and to make your own life seem sordid. Um, so there was really no outlet to notify anybody. Also, another, like, you know, god of the, you know, silver screen was Clark Gable. And so you think, you look at Clark Gable, and you really don't want anything bad to be associated with him. But it is alleged that in 1935, Clark Gable date-raped co-star Loretta Young while on an overnight train from a studio location back to Hollywood. Now, that was bad, but what's even worse is she gets pregnant during this encounter, and she hides her pregnancy, she gives birth, all in secret, she gives her daughter up to an orphanage, and then she adopts her when her daughter is 19 months old. So, I mean, just the, the muck. I mean, and then George Hodel, if you don't know, he is the suspected killer of the Black Dahlia. He was actually friends with people like Man Ray, John Huston, and other very, you know, powerful Hollywood people. But I'm going to do a whole different, you know, um, show, I guess, about him. So, it's just, it's a very sordid mess. So, really, it's just, those two stories are just the tip of the iceberg. And I will try to look more into it and do other, you know, episodes about them, if you're all interested. And last time I looked, I had four subscribers, so thank you. I appreciate you. And you know, pass it on to friends and family. I'm hoping to get better at this. So thank you again. And hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit like and best wishes.